Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some romance recommendations that have magic in them. Baby, baby. So we're getting towards the fall season, spooky, magical season in my mind. Um, whenever I think about fantasy magical books, I always think about the fall time. So I thought this would be a great time to make a rec video for romances that deal with magic or have magic in them. So these recommendations are filled with fantasy romances and paranormal romances. So let's get started. I'm excited to talk about these. So first I have Make Me Burn by Tiffany Roberts. This is their first book in the Isle of the Forgotten fantasy romance series. So our hero in here, Morthanion, he is a demon who's kind of like wreaked havoc everywhere on this world. And kind of like the overseers are sick of him. They're like, this guy is causing way too much trouble. He is a bad demon. And so they kind of like catch him and put him in magical jail, but it's not a jail. It's an island, Isle of the Forgotten, an island um, that has like this curse put on it or something along those lines to where anyone who lives on the island um, does not have any magical powers. And Marthenion is pissed <laughs> because all that he's known his entire life is his magical demon abilities, you know? And so he's not happy about this situation. He's trying to find a way off this island. One day he ends up seeing a woman in the ocean and he is like mystified by her. He's like, who is this beautiful woman? And he finds out that she has powers and she's able to do magic. And his life goal is basically to find this woman and to convince her to let him get out of this prison essentially. Um, and then he falls in love with her. It's very demon siren-esque. Um, and so yeah, she's the only being on the whole entire island who has magical powers. Each book in the series takes place on this island, so I don't know if all the other books deal with magic too, because they technically take place on an island that takes away your magical abilities. But I really love this one. You have a demon hero falling in love with a sweet, innocent siren woman. Like, it is so good. Camera angle just changed. I got a phone call. <laughs> Anyway, um, let's, let's, let's talk about the next book, um, which is I Promise a Fire by Amanda Boucher. This is one of my favorite fantasy romances. I love it so much. Um, this is her first book in the Kingmaker Chronicles, which is a amazing fantasy romance series. I love the magical aspect in this series. I think it's very cool and unique and it also deals with mythology, which is cool. Like this made up world's type of mythology. Our heroine in here, her name is Kat and she is hiding her identity. She is running away from something. You don't know what it is until you read the book, obviously, um, but she's trying to hide her identity and keep like on the down low. Um, and so she is disguising herself as a soothsayer in this traveling circus. And Griffin just so happens to be one of the people who passes by this traveling circus and notices Kat. And he immediately knows who and what she is. He knows that she is a kingmaker. It is this magical being that exists once every 200 years. And it is a magical being that is able to tell when someone is lying or not. Kat also has a few other magical powers. You figure out what they are throughout the series, but Griffin decides to take Kat for himself because he has a sister that just took over this kingdom sitting on the throne and he wants to keep her there. And so he decides to take the Kingmaker with him so he can keep his sister on the throne. And this is a story about him taking her, chaining her to him with a magical chain and taking her to his land. There is amazing banter. It is amazing enemies to lovers. And the magical aspect in this world is just Fan freaking tastic. I loved it. I feel like a lot of the magical stuff also gets more explored in books two and three. Um, and book four is about to come out soon, and I'm so excited for it. And hopefully, there's even more amazing magical aspects in there. But Kat's powers in here are so cool, and the way that she explores her powers and finds out about new ones is just such a wild ride. Another fantasy romance that I really enjoyed was Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. This is also available to read on Kindle Unlimited if you have Kindle Unlimited. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling dealing with Fae. There's a bunch of magical aspects in here but I feel like the main one is the curse and the Beauty and the Beast aspect in that. Um, so our heroine Sorsha in here, she is trying to take care of her ailing father. She's a midwife but her dad is sick and so she's taking care of him and she realizes he's dying and she goes to this witch and asks her for a cure and the witch is like, okay, I'll give you a cure if you are able to go to this forgotten island 
and bring back this forgotten king, this forgotten fake king, and I'll give you the cure to your dad's illness. She's like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go find, <laughs> I'm gonna go find this king. So she does just that and um, he is a fae prince and in this world, when it comes to the fae, they're very revered for their perfection and their beauty. Um, but this prince was fighting one day with his brother with a sword um, and his brother cut him and geodes started growing out of his body and scars and all that stuff. And he was basically kicked out of his family and the land itself and has become to rule this island of misfits, basically an island of magical creatures who have been ostracized from their people as well. So Sosha goes to this island to try and find this king and he is grumpy and gruff and doesn't want to get to know her at all, obviously. But yeah, the two of them get together and it follows a similar, somewhat similar plotline to Beauty and the Beast. So I really recommend this one if you haven't read it yet and you love fantasy romance and Beauty and the Beast. Next, I have a whole series for you. This is the Immortals After Dark series by Presley Cole, the first one being a hunger like no other. Each book in this series is filled with magic and magical creatures and it is so good. It is so good. So each book is about a different magical creature being finding their mate essentially. Um, I'll just talk about book one but all of them. I love all of them. They are addicting. They are so good. The first one is about our hero who is a lichen, kind of like a werewolf, and he has been captured by some evil vampires keeping him underground for years. He's been chained up for years and he's able to smell things up above on earth in like the our field of play, not underground, you know, like regular surface earth. He's able to smell things and hear things. And one day he ends up scenting his mate and he essentially goes feral. He's like, oh my gosh, my mate is here. I have to go find her this, like she's gonna walk away. I won't be able to smell her anymore. I have to get out of these chains. And the only way he can get out of his chains is to break his leg literally break his leg to get out of these chains. So he does just that. He breaks out of his bonds, his breaks his leg and runs up to the surface to find his mate just to find out that she is a part of a magical group of creatures that are his sworn enemy. Our heroine in here is part vampire and the hero is pissed. <laughs> He's like, why would fate deal me this set of cards. Why would fate give me a woman who's a vampire who I'm sworn to hate? But the hero, his name is uh, Lachlan. He cannot help himself though. He's very interested in her and very intrigued by her and wants her. Even though he hates her kind, he takes her and kidnaps her and brings her to this castle to make her his um, or tries to not make her his because he hates vampires. The vampires are the people that have been torturing him for years, but he honestly can't help himself. He he wants his mate. He wants her so bad. And then he gets to know Emmeline, the heroine, and he realizes how amazing this woman is. And she's more than just the label of vampire. So this one is really good. I love so many of these books. One of my favorite ones is one of the later books in the series where it's like a Hades and Persephone retelling. Um, there's a bunch of demons in here, Valkyrie, vampires, lichens, like there's a bunch of, there's a ghost one, there's a ghost one, like this series is chock full of magicalness. <laughs> Another paranormal one um, is Fantasy Lover by Sherilyn Kenyon. I've only read this first book in the series. I know I should read more. I know people love this series. So this book takes place, I think like at the time it was written, like the early 2000s. So yeah, 2002. Um, and our heroine here, Grace, um, <laughs> she gets like this funny like gag gift from her friend, kind of like a magical, book full of spells or something like that and she ends up getting drunk one night with her friend and they say the spell and then a man appears he gets sucked out of this book like this adonis of a man gets sucked out of this book and is here for grace the heroine to give her pleasure <laughs> so the hero's name is julian of macedon he was cursed millennia ago years ago um to service women so anytime a woman opens the book he will service them for a specific amount of time specified in the curse and then he gets sucked back into the book so heroine grace in here is going to help him break said curse um but julian is very attracted to grace and grace is very attracted to him and so they may have some fun with each other along the way and yeah this one was very cute and um very interesting with like the mythology and the 
magical aspect in here. It was really cool. Grace Draven is an author that I love that is like chock full of magicalness in her romances, but I'm just going to talk about two in today's video. First is of course Master of Crows, the first book in her Master of Crows series. Silhara of Neath is a very prolific very powerful sorcerer. And some people in the government in this fantasy world um, thinks that Silhara can get too much power and will possibly overthrow them. So they want someone to go spy on him to make sure he's not doing anything shady. And so they get Martise, who I believe is a slave. And the only way to get her freedom back is to do this for them, to pretend to be an apprentice to Silhara, but actually spy on him. However, when uh, Martise shows up to be his apprentice, <laughs> Silhara so immediately knows that she's a spy. <laughs> like he immediately knows, and he finds it like so, like hilarious how hard she's trying to do some things when <laughs> she's not being sneaky about it whatsoever. Anyway, their relationship is so funny in here to me. I love their relationship. And so yeah, he gives her lessons in magic and how to do certain things. And Martise thinks she's not very capable of doing magic. She's just there to earn her freedom and to spy. But Silhara kind of like shows her that she has this ability to do things she never thought she could, which was so amazing to read about. Another magical one by Grace Draven that I just love is um, Entreat Me. This is a fan favorite recently and we have another Beauty and the Beast retelling. So Lou in here, she is a widow and she has a younger sister and her younger sister has run off with this man and she left a note for Lou saying she's gonna go run off with this guy because she wants to marry him and she's going to his house, his castle. And Lou's not for it. She's like, oh no, you're not. I am following you. So she goes and follows her to this castle. And there she meets the guy her sister run off with, her his dad. His name is Ballard and he is cursed. Um, his wife put a curse on him and his son. So both Ballard and his son are cursed. So you have like a double Beauty and the Beast aspect in here. And obviously you read it about in the book why she cursed them, but she was a very scorned woman and she cursed her son and his dad. And so this is about Lou falling in love with Ballard and Ballard falling in love with her and Lou trying to figure out the ramifications of this curse and what it all entails and how she can break it. The curse is just really interesting when it comes to um, the house, when it comes to Ballard and his son and what it entails. And like the beast part was interesting because that involves magic too, because um, someone may or may not turn into a beast. It was also interesting what the the plants like have a mind of their own, like their magic, they can grow and form and, and do other things all by themselves kind of, um, which was really cool. But I just really love this one. If you want a good, another good Beauty and the Beast retelling, this is one you should pick up. Another fantasy romance that I just love is The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. I will never shut up about this book. It is just so good. It's an amazing fantasy romance with enemies to lovers and amazing banter. So our hero in here, Winter, he is a king. He has winter powers. He can do snow, ice, all that jazz. Think Elsa, kind of. <laughs> and yeah, he wants to take over this kingdom, okay? The king of Summerlee is the ruler of said kingdom. The king of summer, whatever. And so he goes to the king of Summerlee and he's like, hey, I kind of want to take over your land, but I won't if you give me one of your beautiful famous daughters to marry. Um, and then I'll leave your land alone. Just give me one of them to marry. And the king is like in a bind. He's like, dang, I don't want to give any of my daughters up to this guy to marry, but I don't want him to take over my land. What do I do? He gets this idea in his brain where he's like, you know what? I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna marry him off to one of my daughters, but it's gonna be the daughter that I hate, that nobody knows about, that lives in a tower up in the castle. So her name is Kasbin and she is the summoner of storms. She has storm powers. She's forced to marry King Winter without him knowing that it's not one of the daughters he thought he was marrying. Um, she's covered in like lace and a veil and everything. So, so he doesn't know who he married until after the marriage is already consummated and there are no takesies backsies <laughs> and he's like pissed off that he's been tricked but Casman kind of is scared of him but also sees this as an opportunity to get away from her father who was horrible to her and yeah the two of them kind of like go on an adventure and complete this magical thing i don't want to talk about it too much but they do some things together with their magic and Casman is trying to learn how to control her powers more um and she is so powerful. It's so cool to read about her powers. It's so cool. A Ruby Dixon one that I loved was Bound to the Battle God. This is her first book in her Aspect and Anchor series. The magical aspect of this series is just so interesting. It's so cool. Um, I can't really talk about it all that much because I don't really fully understand it all that much because it's just so intricate and cool. So our heroine in here lives on Earth with like us. 
like in our world in our universe okay and then one day a portal opens up in her apartment or the apartment next to hers and she gets sucked into a fantasy world she doesn't know where the heck she is obviously and in this fantasy world there are gods and they kind of think of zeus like there's this one big father god okay and he has a bunch of children that have pissed him off and so he casts all of his children down to the mortal realm in this fantasy world and the hero in here i forgot his name aaron 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 yes so he's kind of like the war god i think so aaron has been one of the children cast down from the heavens and the only way to stay on the mortal plane is to bind yourself to a human anchor aaron has chosen the heroine to choose just that so they're kind of like stuck together because if they're bound and they go f like they have distance between the two like if she like runs away from him because she doesn't want to be a part of this she runs away from him it will viscerally cause her immense pain to be away from him um so she is stuck by this man's side who is arrogant and rude and broody and she just is not having a fun time with this being stuck to this man um but they have to work together to find a solution to go find him the way to go back to the heavens so um this is a big adventure book filled with slow burn tension and the last romance that i want to mention is roses in winter by penelope daniels and this is another beauty and the beast retelling i didn't know i had so many on this video but it is another one so our hero in here edward has been cursed he's been cursed to have scars all over his body and to be stuck in this mansion and um the house is magical too like it's really cool the, the magic that this house has and then one day though like the magical objects in his house kind of like inform him that there is a woman in front of his gates to his mansion. He's like, what? And he finds this woman passed out almost dead in the snow in front of his gates. So immediately picks her up, brings her inside and realizes who this woman is. Her name's Alina. She is there because she just happened to collapse while seeking help. So Alina is from a village nearby. Um, she is running away from her husband. Her husband was very abusive, is very abusive towards her. And she decided one night that enough is enough. After she's been brutally beaten one night, she's like, enough is enough. I am getting out of the situation. So she runs off with like no supplies whatsoever. She just needs to get away in the blizzard snow, walks and finds his house, his mansion, and passes out right there. It's about the two of them getting to know each other, very Be and the Beast-esque, obviously, um, think that dynamic, but also you have this villain character trying to find his wife for because she left him. So this one does get a little serious at times because of the domestic violence, um, so please be aware of that. Uh, but I thought the magical part in here was really cool with the house and the curse and everything, so yeah. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romance recommendations with magic in them please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a like sparkle emoji in the comment section down below but yeah thank you all so, so much for watching and we'll see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all wake up today's gonna be a good day 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 wake up Today's gonna be a good